not the case. That's why I said that I love this country. This country helped me out. Um, it's the country I believe, it's the country I'm going to stay in. Unless, God forbid, something, who knows what, Kaczynski can happen. Uh, yeah, concern is that when you complain about this stuff, uh, the complaints don't really go that far. That's one of the things I have to say about the Poland, that, that it's really limited, the stuff that... Uh, so far, um, the real results, I didn't really get any. I see the people helping me on every step of the way, uh, but it, much more it's got to be done. This kind of political party actually should come to life. It's something has got to start happen, uh, happening in this country. This, this country is in a situation, in my opinion, in an urgent need of help, of assistance. Uh, it's... From the outside, they're, they're taking control over this country. They are twisting the country in the opposite direction of what this country is. And it's just uh, a concern of mine that, that uh, if things are going to continue like this, it's going to be too late for everybody. And so I hope that what the stuff that I have projected to you throughout this video, and I know that was really unpleasant one because I know myself, I start to bitch. Uh, I am probably not the person that anybody wants to be near because I come up with some very interesting uh, issues that otherwise would never pop up in my head. I sincerely hope that things are going to start to change in the right direction and I hope I count on Polish people that Ukrainian people, Polish people to foresee that a politic like this truly does not serve anyone, count on Russian people, on Belarus people. Party like this is going nowhere. Um, and I really, when I consider Putin, even if Russia would get some kind of stuff like this, some kind of technology, military technology and stuff like this, when I consider the possibility of mutual cooperation between Ukraine and Russia, and I'll tell you that Nobody have seen themselves more in Russian people than Ukrainian people that were here. And I just know this people, Ukrainian people here in, in Zgirsh, I remember them since 2003, 2002, they were here. You understand? And when Americans first met them, uh, when I, what, the first thing I did was, because of what Putin created already in 97 the first thing i did i assaulted them verbally and i would just continue to pick on them probably because of similar facial features or something like this language whatever i have the opportunity i would just go and, and just assault once they they uh, created an impression on me uh russian kgb that's the only thing i was doing and going around and pretty much whatever they would bring me it would be uh, the next to happen it will be a problem. Uh, nobody have seen themselves more in Russian people than Ukrainian people. They would defend Russian people for the price of their life. You, when you talk to, to Ukrainian, in fact, you have spoken to the Russian. Anything you would say, whatever you would do, it would go straight into the Russian eyes, uh, ears. It was like indifferent from Russia, basically. The thing about it is that what Putin did, he broke this bond, this, this motherly bond from Russia that these people had. And once the assault started on the Donbass and Crimea, the whole thing turned around into, in, into a completely different situation, direction. The Ukrainian people are the least to blame for what happened to Ukraine. It was assault, it's a terrorism, uh, it's an attack on a sovereign nation that suffered already terrible fate during the Stalin that Vladimir Putin have reopened for the sake of his own political, not even Russian ambitions. And his interests were on a primary place are economic interests. And what I suggested is that 
whatever Russia got from the West, like technology-wise, military-wise, and stuff like this, they have lost more uh, from lending themselves away from Ukrainian cooperation. They would get much more, both nations would profit from mutual help, cooperation, uh, rather than basically getting themselves, uh, rather than Russia getting herself into a conflict with somebody that should never ever repeat. It's a stuff never ever should repeat ever. The only thing that the two can do for one another is basically help one another, cooperate with one another, and never even should come in consideration something that Vladimir Putin did for his own personal ambitions, not even for the Russia. And so I understand that, that it was a lot of stuff done uh, to, to hurt in many ways. It was a huge interest. Whatever Russians have done here in this country, they have done so with permission of Kaczynski. They could not do the stuff they have done to me. They could not allow themselves to do something like this in Russia alone. And this is what Kaczynski gave them. The one who financed all this stuff, however, was Donald Trump through his establishment. He was the one who dealed the cash for all the dirty operations against American citizen myself here in this case. Uh, from the same city as Melania Trump. He definitely deemed that regardless of how he will manage somehow to manipulate, steer the situation in a way that uh, he was still got a way out uh, clean either way if I wouldn't in case be destroyed because that was the primary thing. This is what he dealt the cash in Poland to these politicians, literally. They took bribes, so they would have done what he wanted them to do. And what exactly have Donald Trump done all this time, all along? Donald Trump is a neo-Nazi bigot, hater, a pedophile, a rapist. If anything can be worse than this, a criminal, corrupt criminal, thug, gangster, who have, in my personal opinion, a very deep psychological issues in his head, and no wonder. And what he did was, as a multi-billionaire, he picked on an ordinary person. I'm just a regular guy, I don't see myself as anything special, really. I'm just an ordinary guy that wants to have my family, wants to have my life. That's all I wanted to have. And basically, he figured out just like other neo-Nazis, like the Germans, who have, in fact, acted this time uh, through the United States of America. They used the U.S. as a proxy to basically enter the Poland and start to rearrange society according to their own taste. Through That's why I suggested a Gauleiter Kaczynski, individual that they have basically appointed here to do the cleansing according to their uh, according to their taste, they will be, uh, it wouldn't be, uh, it would be basically population both sides of the border indifferent and stuff like this. This, this, this is, these are, these are the ideas. And then you have to ask yourself, why is the border there? And there you go. And it's a big Germany and stuff like this. Folks, what I'm talking about is just a real scenario. I did not get one from Poles. I didn't get one from Russians. This is what Germany dreamed about. Ethnic cleansing on the other side of the other river. This is, this is not a joke. And so what Donald Trump procalculated was that if he screws up the person, let's say an average Joe, if he screw him up life upside down with forced unemployment, real sorts of employment issues, with psychiatry and so on, um, he, just like a neo-Nazi, can actually hide behind something that will look not even completely normal, what would actually give them actually credit to look normal, when these people are everything but normal. This is basically what this case is all about. As far as MKUltra staff members, involved in this case. 
Yeah, MK Ultra staff members, landlords, police alone are the people that, whether they like it or not, I am just going to remind myself again, I couldn't help myself to think about the doctor, personal doctor, physician from Donald Trump, who would come to Slovenia with Donald Trump. He would be all the time next to him in Slovenia. And he would be one of the staff members that would that I would um, that that he would have me go back and forth, and he would spend considerable amount of time with me. Uh, this individual, the best explains, and it's pretty much what I think that every one of the staff members of American staff members share that exactly same view as he did. You know, you don't have to be genius. His evaluation of Donald Trump was that Donald Trump is a little bit disturbed man. Uh, is nothing special. Individual who he preferably would even avoid intellectually, not anywhere even near his criteria. However, he did pay him the money for a rather uh, sitting in the office a uh, boring job gave him the opportunity to experience something else for a few extra dollars even. And so this is how he ended up over there in this MK Ultra case in Slovenia. Uh, and it was pretty much the same thing with this uh, young kids. Some were looking for better opportunities in, in Hollywood. Some were looking for uh, pro in opportunities in, in, in private fields, in industry, other industries. Um, whatever the deal was, I can only say that none of these people had really bad intentions. They did not have any bad intentions. And it's also pertaining to the police. It's also pertaining to um, landlords, as crazy it may sound. However, at certain point, uh, things started to turn twist in Donald Trump's head. And the people alone that participated, and again, it goes to landlords, the police and everything, they no longer have seen what from the beginning was demonstrated as it will be a help to Bobby. It will be a help to Bobby. So when he comes back here, um, he's going to be able to identify started to change into completely different, twisted, crazy scenarios. And some of these scenarios involved stuff that not even this old man, this psychologist whom he hired to screw me up big time. Um, not even he any longer when he realized that I, it, it was the stuff that they could actually plant me with uh, it could really get me, I will still create a video on that subject. Uh, it would be better for me to just not do it, actually. You know, um, it demonstrates that the people did go along for as much as, as long as they were possible to go on to help out. Now, whether you like it or not, the landlords stuck here. They had to stick to the scenario along with the police, do their stuff. It was administering for the bar show. Now, whether you like it or not, you're going to do your part. You don't really have a choice. That's taking me next to the next field known as a psychiatry, but I didn't get there yet. Um, most of them were just a good-minded, good-spirited people that wanted to help. Uh, find themselves out of the picture because they were not suitable uh, to continue this MK Ultra procedure from the point of view that they were concerned for me. Because these people could do nothing. All of them together could do nothing. Even today, if you look at the US, where you see this clown walking back and forth, how much people actually go out there and protest against him and stuff like this, they are very limited. Everybody's got a opinion about this individual, but what exactly can they do about that's another thing, right? So going into the next field, I will not hold these people liable for anything. 
uh, but I would prefer them to give the whole witnessing account. Uh, in fact, in some cases, I might actually even use other methods if they if they would not give uh, their witnessing account according to this, because it's it's just an important piece of uh, something that must be documented. That this stuff I have done, I have gone through. Uh, I don't even know how I would relate to this. Was yet the most, the weirdest, the craziest thing that, not because of the devil wanted to prove something, but I just want the world to understand that humanity, maybe even love, is stronger than a money issues, the stuff that can be used to, to, to destroy humanity. I want this case to be known, that this was a case, this was, and I want this confirmation that this was. Uh, they did perform this on behalf of Donald Trump. I want this, I will ask for that. As far as psychiatry, that's something I was hyped through the internet, but I never go, I never really went against this stuff because I had a very funny feelings about the profession itself. I had a funny feeling because of my physician over there in, in, in Slovenia, this, this Dr. Kapsch. He did not agree with any of that stuff they did to me. There were psychiatrists that were watching this stuff that just like American staff members or the landlords or everybody else that was involved in this stuff, they, they couldn't do anything. Uh, they just had to do whatever they, uh, they were told to do. Now, there were really some sick apples in those, uh, in this psychiatric field. Uh, particularly, there was maybe one individual that, that is just probably today, he probably even regrets because God knows what they have popped in his head. You know, the two were really bad. But the rest of it, um, yeah, I was also prompted in Grotniki by Yuri, let's say, from Belarus. That, he started to cry to me about the psychiatry. They are no good. That this and that. Well, the thing is that in Poland, right here in Poland, they had a bunch of psychiatrists that in MK Ultra were stressed, concerned, uh, touched emotionally, had pledged to assist me to their to to the best of their possibilities, abilities because they were disturbed to what they have witnessed because they knew that nothing is wrong with me and pretty much everything was wrong with Donald Trump. Yet, whether they like it or not, the only thing they could possibly do is assist and most of them, since they not even directly got involved in it, observed from far what went on. But they sure did encourage for me to not lose hope, to go on with it. They even gave me instructions. I, I'm, I'm a little bit like this when it comes to instructions because, you know, if, if, you, if you are not what you are, you, the instructions you can give, but this is not really that makes the person, right? So me going against the field of psychiatry, against the psychiatrists, I have to disappoint you out there if you are a persecuted person, whatever the hell you are, it's happening a lot, uh, will not go. Because I feel, and that's related to the war, to the underground war to which we witness, especially in the United States of America, if you look at the map those that I posted on my news site of these mass shootings. If you put the map, you're gonna see it's all red everywhere in the US, it's covered. We have an underground war going, whether you like to admit this yourself or not, folks. Voice of the people is the only one that can release from a terrible fate to which very possibly, very likely, people involved in the field of psychiatry oppose maybe even the most. They are people too. You think that it's pleasant for them to do the stuff like this? You think they actually enjoy? Some do, some, but maybe 
maybe maybe ten percent, maybe one out of ten, maybe would do some something like this that would have some kind of own personal psychological issues, which is a completely again a normal structure of the population. If you break down the population, you're gonna see how many people are affected with mental issues. You can relate that also to the field of psychiatry. Just because they're working in that field doesn't mean they're immune from psychological issues. So that I would go against them and target them because of the field of profession they have chosen, which is completely indifferent from a mailman or a mechanic or a police officer, or whoever is doing out there his job, except that these people became tool of the politicians because of the certified opinion which the state alone gives them. Basically, the state is the politician that somehow finds himself in uh, environments because of some completely other issues that involve other officials. Behind the curtain, you don't even know people. Um, that, I will not go into it. I'm not going to go against psychiatrists. You can see this either way you want to do it. Uh, the fate of the psychiatry will stay in your hands, people, whatever it is that you are. You are going to be the one who will ultimately decide whether you want to continue the underground work. Uh, the underground work starts with a little conflict, so you have explained with the corruptions. A little corruption, a little something that you do that leads into a bigger and bigger conflict. Uh, either you're going to do this yourself, uh, or I think God helps you because, you know, this mass shootings, rampage killings, this kind of cracks, uh, these are just this is just an entry, this is just a prelude into a real civil war. It's both sides that are engaging in this, and left and right. Uh, the thing about it is that in, often, in most of the cases in big Germany, known as United States of America, um, the left is nothing more than a control of the position. And so most of the stuff that you get yourself involved with, when participating in this kind of underground war and left, when you think it's left, uh, you don't even know really what's going on. And you might be targeting completely wrong people and creating bigger and bigger ripples that eventually are going to implore into another civil war we're going to have, if it's going to go like this. This is what Donald Trump have spent, along with other politicians, probably another, the last at least, 30 years building behind your background, behind the curtain, behind under the service of the society. So you may want to think about that kind of stuff before you're going to go and blame anybody and rather act as a people if this is what you want, if you want to do a change, if you want to change in your life, or you can, I have no idea, maybe continue uh, to just watch, perhaps in some cases even participate in local wherever you have next coming in your neighborhood. Uh, it's up to you, folks. This is MK Ultra, and MK Ultra, I'm probably your best weapon ever because I have explained how it works, what's going on. Now, what you're going to do with it, uh, this entirely is up to you. I, I have the same opinion about the police. Actually, I think that police gave me the chance. I think the police gave me a really good chance uh, to do something about the stuff I have talked about. Uh, that really depends on you people because um, you're ultimate deciders about it all, okay? So that's all I wanted to say. Poland is just a beautiful, beautiful country. The only thing I hope for the Poland is to stay this way. Maybe a little bit better economic situation would be really good. That would be good. There's a lot of other stuff that needs to change. Society should be upgraded foremost into academic society. There's a lot of stuff I think that must be done. So the circumstances for the people here definitely drastically improve because it's just a country, a nation that absolutely deserves a chance. I believe in Poland and I'm committed to the Poland. That's all I want to say. But that was a really good stuff. Uh, did I go off like this? 
because it just demonstrates um, what happens to us here, Poles, I see myself as a Polish, uh, and I'm thinking about the stuff I've seen in the U.S. about these people in, in Chicago, Poles, and what I read on the internet about Poles in London and Britain and so on, they find themselves broke in the streets, or other would return themselves, they insist, try to get some kind of jobs and stuff, get themselves in a car and stuff like this. Folks, it's stop to stop this and start doing something for yourself, for your country, for your families, so you can build your life here the way it should be and so on. So the, you're not going to look broken, bad like myself and politicians with their ties, with their fake smiles, good on political stages. Thanks for watching this program. Now the, what's coming next, I'm going to play you the audio recording so you're going to see the stuff I have spoken about in respect to what even was like six times cost of the car repairs, they did not exist. Um, the catalytic converter, I got one right here from the internet. And it, it's not cheap, it's, it, it will cost about a quarter of the vehicle. Um, you know, that's the cost that I eventually will get back from someone who removed this stuff and he did so because he did this kind of stuff so he would um, not only sell one and make money with it but he did so so he would increase the horsepower in my opinion this is not only my opinion this is what he personally have told me this is exactly what he did and he might actually even do something like this according to him if I properly remember to demonstrate to Americans, this is a very proud Polish man who sold me this car. It's a Czech car. To demonstrate to Americans the Czech Skoda is also strong, that is also good. He's actually a really good guy, this guy. Now when I think over, when I go over him, I remember a, a lot of stuff. It's just that this catalytic converter really wasn't the car that, that destroyed the power, the horsepower from the vehicle. Um, he did this already at least in 2015, 100%. He was the one who drove, used the car, his wife, I think, too. His wife did, and it's why he actually installed, I remember, because he even showed me the direction where the wife is going. If I put my brain to work, I might pull some other information, but he, he installed himself. He installed himself fire extinguisher right next to under the seat uh, passenger seat so she could if anything would go wrong she just reach out and use it to save herself he's a very good family beautiful man but the, he did a few things that I'm just gonna have to charge him for it um, technical examination in Poland you have a second market known as a Strumica Tumnik, that are like mufflers that look like mufflers in English. They look just like this catalytic kind of converter, but there's nothing inside. And so what that thing will do is you just pull the police officer when they come, they check the vehicle. So they're not going to suspect, because they do that. Uh, they're not going to suspect that you actually are cheating the emission laws in Poland. And um, it's this market that exists, it's all over the internet that they do this kind of sales, they do this kind of business. Um, because the technicians that certify, they'll give you the certification that, in fact, the vehicle is, um, that the vehicle actually complies with regulations, with the CO2 emissions. Uh, or it might even be that you'll get somebody to take off that uh, nothing. And this car was actually nothing, but I think he's got like a muffler. He's got a muffler, he's got, he's got a muffler. Uh, and so what he'll do is he'll just, when he goes, on exam, on a state inspection, if he can already convince the, the, the guy, if he doesn't know him, uh, the guy that would just typically let him go through, because most likely that's what the case is. What he'll do is, 
he'll just put the muffler on. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, converter on, and once he passes the inspection, he'll just pop the um, a muffler, uh, either muffler or um, muffler back for sure. And so when this car was sold, and it can also be seen in the video that I had made, it looks like a kind of a fresh um, welding, you know, that I have observed. That means that. That's pretty much probably what he had there stood. That's probably what the case was. He's got a muffler somewhere. And the only thing he did was um, he used something catalytic converter to go through uh, examination. And he's using a muffler uh, then to um, keep the car um, out of the police eyesight. So they don't realize what it is. it's either a car or a catalytic converter or whatever it is. That's all there is to it. The mechanic where I am actually, that's why I think he's got a muffler 100%. The mechanic where I'm installing this thing, what I will install is the gentleman I have recognized the other day. Today I have also recognized his uh, co-worker. And I'll be actually really pleased that these people will do the job because these people, I, I got confirmation that they worked together already for the two mechanics for over 10 years they always work together these two guys they were involved in mk ultra uh, this goes back again to 2005 something like this way back when the gentleman with whom i yet have to see him a little bit go back in a memory if i remember properly he did not even know he's got a house over there uh, he did not actually even know what to do with the place, with his property, and then somehow he decided that he's just going to let the shops pop up on his property. He's got a house, and around his property, these little shops, body shops and stuff, mechanics like this popped up. Uh, he figured out that would be just the best way for him to collect the rent. As I go a little bit more through the memory, I might actually pull some other information. And so tomorrow, when I have an appointment to install this, and by the way, today is November the 7th, 2019. Tomorrow is going to be 8th. I'll also go through examination and transfer the title. I might actually ask him some extra questions. I'll see how far my memory goes. The thing is that my memory goes, but the thing is that there is other stuff that I have to do, complete, and back and forth i just want to get rid of this and go on with my job market life career and stuff like that that's all there is uh, the next coming just a bunch of uh, audio recordings that are going to confirm that stuff i have spoken about is real is facts in addition to whatever i already have presented and that's quite a lot a to nie, nie, nie możliwe, żeby to by się zmieniło twoim olej, olej z czym jednego, nie? Nie zmieniamy. Teraz nie, aha. A jest na sprzedaż to u was? A ile to jest? No to by było, to by, to by było tam 70, 9, 90, za skrzynię tego. 30 zł. I to jest ten na stałką, co jest na górę. E, jest taki jak na stałek jest na górę. To jest, to jest, to jest, to jest, to jest taka ciełka jest. 
Tak, tu na górę sada taka ta kastelka jest. Nie wiem, czy jest to górka, fabryczny, zamknięty. Fabryczny zamknięty, normalna normalna rzecz. Ale ja właśnie nie wiem, co on to ma, bo niektóre mają, a niektóre tego nie mają. Niektóre mają, niektóre, a niektóre nie, nie mają. No. A jest... I pan co, lepiej podjechać tam, gdzie będą panu wymieniać, niech oni sami sobie zadecydują. Ja to sam jaką... meniam, nie będę to... Aha, sam będę to wymieniał. Nie to meniać, ja sam będę to zmieniał. Ja mogę sam to zrobić. No to sobie tak by to było, tak jak, jak tak. A to nie by... Nie by pasowało. Nie, bo to ale, jest chyba źle tu. Ale jest coś takiego, co byłoby coś, nie by było. Um, Panowie tu mają taką odwagę, wlewają mi się taką odwagę i ja tego nie mam, to na przykład tu jest. A tu warsztat to nie, nie chcę ja zrobić. Ej, nie, bo po prostu teraz ma bardzo dużo pracy z oponami. No, pan mówi, co, co się nie robi, to się nie pracuje. No. Wymiana, a tu jest wymiana oleju. To nie, nie chcę nic robić tu, inne rzeczy. To. Um, Okej, okay, to, to, to jest wszystko co jest tu. Nie? Tak. tak. O, ja przepraszam, bardzo dziękuję Wam. Dziękuję bardzo. Um, jeszcze... A to co tu, aha, to co tu jest tu, to jest e, ten wręcz świata, ile by to kosztowało proszę. Czekaj. Aha. Jest na sklepie. A, okej. Okay. A, wejście tu jest? Tu mogę wejść? A nie wiem, nie wiem, bo... Aha. Dziękuję bardzo. Fidżę? Tak, Ej, proszę pana. Proszę pana, dzień dobry. Przepraszam. Yy, proszę, ile kosztuje tu wymiana oleja? Tak, skrzynię z Lego. Ja skrzynię Lego nie robimy. Nie robicie? Nie, 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 ja nie, mogę być ten sam zrobić. To jest taka możliwość, co by wy... Nie, 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 ja tu mam tylko wymienione oleju, to, 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 mówię, to by trzeba było gdzieś odjechać. Może tu naprzeciwko panu zrobią. Tam jest taki zakładzik mały. Aha. Takie brązowe drzwi. Ale tu jest e, wymiana oleju ekspresowany. No ale to tylko w silniku, bo ja robię, nie? Tylko za silnik, nie? Tak, 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 tak. Aha, rozumiem. Um. Dobrze, bardzo dziękuję Wam.
Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Proszę pana, znaczy co, ja chciałbym wymienić olej za skrzynię tego na moim samochodzie. Jest szkoda 99 euro. Ale co to jest automat? Nie, nie, to jest manualnie, jest ręczny, tak. Ale kiedy, a kiedy, kiedy pan to chce zrobić? A ja bym chciał teraz, chciałbym zrobić to szybko, jak możliwo. Tak, to jest szkoda jakaś. Tak, ale kiedy nasza dziewczyna... A ja mogę to sam zrobić, tylko jeżeli nie znam... Znaczy co nie mam, nie mam narzędzia, nie mam narzędzia, co sam by to zrobił, zrobię to za 10 minut, zrobię to na własnym podróż, nie muszę mi na kanał za to. Nie no, ale jest na pewno, że będzie tak. Wy by mi posudzieli narzędzia, czy ja to sam zrobię to. Nie, my nie wypożyczamy narzędzia. Ok, ile by to kosztowało? No ile przy tej grzybnia na takim oleju? Ja jestem tam po olej, kupię to, przyjdę tu, że mi to dacie. Ja wiem, ile na to, że 40 zł to tak trzeba liczyć. 40? No. Ja, no ale co, ja kupię olej tam i przyjdę tu i zrobię to. Tam jest kanał, to na kanale, wiesz, ten, no, ja ma taka, no, rozumiem. No, rozumiem. To olej, olej kupisz i przyjdź i zrobię. Gdy zrobię to, a u was to oleja nie? No, ale nie oleja. Dobrze. Pan na przecieczu ma, tak? Ma olej, ma olej. Ale za skrzynię bego ma? Tak, ma, 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 ma. Chuligany, nie chciałbym... Nie, że nie, nie, nie. Nie chcę do mnie, nie. A co, że to mi wszystkich chciał ten panek. A to jest 10 minut pracy. Słuchajcie, a... No dobrze, zwróćmy tu, wszystko. Dziękuję bardzo. Ile kosztuje ten olej? Ale jaki olej? No, olej za czym nie będą, ma ten na Tak, ale to jest ważne, jaki auto, jaki... No, to nie jest 75, 90, czy co, ze szkoły o Felicio.
co jest to kolej, to nie by było w kinie tego, co tam dzieje, tak? No, nie mam pojęcia. Ja, ja myślę, że my byłem u mechanika u jednym warsztatu tam łodzi. Nie mam pojęcia, może być to my. Ale co, w ogóle nie wchodzą, co się dzieje? Ja, u, u pierwszy i drugi ciężko jest i było jeszcze olej tak na... E, A, na było tak, ja zobaczył się tu. Jeszcze ten, co kupił, bym ten olej chciałby... Jeżeli to jest... Jeżeli to jest to, co to jest olej, jeżeli jest coś innego, może być... Uwaga! No, no. Tylko nie było coś innego. Jeżeli jest coś innego. To jest na lince, nie? Co? A weź wyłączaj i spróbuj ten. Normalnie. Nie jedzie, nie chodzi o drugą i tak, nie? No to. Czy to jest widzę? Może być. Może być coś, coś innego, może być. Będzie chyba sprzęgło. Może być coś sprzęgło. Sprzęgło, że nie sprzęgła tak, jak powinno płynnie. A ile kosztowało by ta naprawa tego? Naprawa to kosztuje 300, 350 zł. Naprawa. Plus y, części. Plus? Plus części. To jest jakieś 700 zł. Bo tu może olej nie wystarczy. Bo tu jest coś bardziej nie. Chyba, że... To nie jest tylko olej, nie? A na sucho? Jak wchodzi? Teraz nie wiem, co wychodzi, nie? To jest inka? Inka, nie? A na, na sucho? Kurwa, bo to jest nie lata. Nie chcę. Ne chce ona u drugu. Ne chce u drugu. Dobrze, to mi, to mi zniszczyli wszystko. No, okay. A to było coś robione? A, ja kupię ten samochód tam jedno tygodnie nazad. Były bez katalizatora. A, I oczywiście też mi zrobili to. Tak. Nie, ne? Ne, nie będzie to. Ne? Nie będzie, ne? Linka jest... 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 Tak, o. No, tak? No, no, Gasnąć go. Zgasnąć go. 
how's it go? All gas suits? Tu jest olej, tu jest na dużo oleja. Na... No wchodzi za bardzo, nie? A teraz lepiej jest, czy nie? A jedynka, dwójka, zobacz. Tu to katalizator wycięty? Tu on tak. Tak. A biegi nie wskakują? Tak, tak. My ciężko mienia te, nie, nie może mieniać. To się będzie słomiało wszystko, jeżeli ja to. E, skakują, tak, spada mu neutralne, Ale tak. Jak jedzie się, to nie, nie, nie wyskoczy bieg? To jak jedzie się, tak. No, tak, kiedy ja. Jedzie na przykład trójkę, tam dwójkę, że. Tak, pało, sam. Sam wyskoczył neutralno i tak. Było. Tak. Było tak. Coś takiego, tak. Jest tam coś do zrobienia. Jeżeli... Jeżeli... Tam jest trochę na tej, na tej konsoli, to jest, ona tam coś, coś jest też na rzeczy. A proszę pana, tu, 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 Zmieniać ten olej tu. E, co tu jest za... Tu, tu jest pust, jest, tak. Tu jest pust. Uh -huh. Aha, a gdzie, gdzie się dole jest to? Gdzieś musi być. Tu jest bardzo czudowny samochód, ale ja go kocham. Ja bym chciał bardzo ten samochód. A, kreuję ten film. Help me out well understand better uh, yeah, what exactly happened. Who is to blame for it? Uh, this day for what happened, and what exactly happened to the Polydor. The gentleman with whom I had eventually agreed to have catalytic converters installed in the car, something that should never be removed from the vehicle, it's actually the vehicle that came with the catalytic converters. 
I was deeply involved with Americans. This man was deeply involved with Americans. No, no, they have other businesses, body shops, where they have Americans. They sell them American cars and stuff like this. No, this whole case was handled by a business group of landowners from the West. I explain more in the video. This whole case is handled by few employers that were facilitated based on their involvement with the, with the West, with Americans in particular. They got all kinds of goodies, favors, and so on. Uh, I explained everything in a very good detail about what went on, uh, what exactly I dealt with, and how, what exactly Donald Trump participated in. Uh, this part of the business plays this guy. This guy took a bribe. This guy took a bribe to do what he did. He was, he was, done he was just a brainwash. It was done so efficient. It's a catalytic converter. This must have been, by the way, you should have come. I was. I tell you, a bunch of people, all the businesses. I can tell you what businesses were working in 2015, maybe even 2013, maybe even in 2013. Look, where I was that day, I can just go and I can tell you about which businesses exist in 2013. This guy here. I was at this guy here. At least in 2015, I was at this guy here. It's called Motos Ragoshevsky. This guy had, I was in another place called Dumex, just for the police record. Still did not fix the, the sidewalk, still they have to go through the sidewalk to get to that shop. Quite unique to this place. Uh, I have not seen anything like this, you have to drive on the sidewalk to actually enter the... the, the quite a decent size, almost a Jeff Lube or something like this workshop. Funny as it gets. And then what happened was mm, kind of funny because I did came during the work hours. Or maybe I did not. I, uh, let me see. I did came during the work hours. And uh, he was busy playing at home with a child, which seemed to me like a good thing, a good, a good decision. I proceeded to this location here. So they were basically throwing me like a ball from one place to another. I was here, uh, I was in another place first. Then I was here, and then I came to this place here. And here is the Leclerc. So driving along the way, I saw that there is a Leclerc here, and I decided that on my way back, I will stop here. In fact, before I even came here, I went straight to the place where we were, what might have been in 2013 rather than 2015. This was the shop that was still open, a body shop. Uh, they would fix this kind of issues, and they are located right here in this corner right here, uh, next to Leclerc. Kind of amazing when I saw that, that I was surprised that this here was not this here. I was pretty damn sure that this is the place I have to go, because I remember Around. So this was the place where I went, I think however is it, probably since 2013 I would say this thing actually is closed. I am sorry I have not taken any pictures whatever that you would see, it's quite big, it's quite decent, but unfortunately I think this thing here is closed. Then I proceeded here to this location here, it's called Automark, and this is where you have, you can see here more uh, bikes they sell, and there is body shops here in the center here. Uh, from this point and on, I did return back to, this is where they went under the car to look what kind of uh, converter, if the universal converter would fit in my car. What even raised more my suspicion was that what the gentleman offered me at the end of uh, the interview with him, uh, that he did not offer me at the beginning already his own catalytic converters that he's going to have for the same price I would order from the internet. That was kind of a surprising to me that he would rather for me to do something like this. Uh, anyways, I evaluated the car and I think when I brought the car uh, about this channel where mechanics inspect underneath the car is, uh, uh, what the car is like, that's basically when they did unscrew the transmission with the drainage screw. Uh, to the point that one would still stay inside but it would start to bleed that transition liquid. So when I Transmission leaking, so I proceeded to the Leclerc on my way back towards Gears, toward home. Um, the only thing I got was some really strange stuff from the lady, from the sales lady at the front cashier, who was also involved in MT Ultra. Oh, they have involved again uh, all kinds of issues. It was coughing that went on, it was all kinds of stuff that went on. 
and uh, I became, uh, it got my attention, I didn't do that personally, I was okay, I, I don't care about it, but in the course of the day, the way things moved, the way I remember the scenario, it really got on my nerves, you know, because of the stuff that you got partially very soon. And there was some other stuff that followed up, and I have not even mentioned what I have gone through at the beginning of the day when I attempted to fix the issue with this catalytic converter. That involved detour, that did not mention anywhere ability for the local traffic to go by, the police over there, uh, and so on and so forth, that would get a ticket to proceed on the road, which is otherwise like a two-way road, like completely normal. And if, you, if you close the road, it will make one-way traffic, at least you put something that it's allowed to go for the local traffic and not create detour that would take you another 10 kilometers to get around or something like that. It's pretty, pretty crazy, pretty insane stuff. Oh. Oh. To było zrobione, to, to było zrobione tak, to, to by, to ja by stracił pieniądze do tych swoich tak. Tak, nie? A co to tam odkręczyli mi, gdzie silnik? Ok, ile za, ile za katalizator, no a tu może być, a no, to jest 60 do 100 zł, no, chyba, 60 zł, no, to. Ile? Za katalizator, 60 zł, za przyspawanie katalizator. Nie, 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 nie. Ja dam, ja sam dam katalizator, to. To jest za, to jest za robotę? Nie może wojny. Za 100 zł możemy zrobić. Tylko 100. Tylko 100. 80. Tu tak. To się... Przyjedzie się to pomusimy, pogadamy. Pomusimy, pogadamy. Co? 80 zł, no? Jest? To jest szefem, szef. Nie, 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 nie. Nie, 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 n
Muši dat, no čo, gdje je daje, pojim gdje sam zlato, ja vam dam 30 zlato za 5 minut. Muši vam bi tak malo zrobi što, ne? No, ale kto inde bi nije vidio? Ne, to je moja mehanika, to je sve, to je sve, to je moja mehanika. Ale kto inde bi nije vidio, ti tam? No! No! Še bo se ne mogu zrobi? No! To še bo se ne mogu zrobi? No! Ja htio bi se vi zrostaje za moja mehanika, razumete? To htio bi, da vi ne robite. Ja stiđem da vas vidim i robite. A možete dati neki disko? Možete da biste sjećali, ne? Ne, gledaš li? Ali mi daži to, meni je tu bardzo teško, jer pracovan tu nije dobro se ne znači. Jer se šukam pravo, da? Jer sam bez pravo, da? Česka situacija. Ja sam da bilo sve njeo penjon, da ja bi vam dao što me je bilo. Ali vi tež nimo da ne robiti za darmo, bo vi tež nimo ne oplatite. Ne razumijem. Evo ga, češi, češi, češi. Ja tež bazim na kule. Bazim na kule. Na to. Vidite. Renke, renke. Ja jesam mehanikem sam. To je to, ne bi znao. Ne bi... Zobaczmy tam, żeby pan jechał, żeby dokonał. Proszę pana. 80 zł, zrobię ten katalizator. Proszę pana. Jak pan będziesz miał część, to będziemy rozmawiać. No, 80 zł. Pa to je čisti da je počem dješa. Pa ne slime, ne? Pa ne slime, ne? Pa ne slime, ne? Pa ne slime, ne? Kad imate dobro, jer ja jesem tu odrobotak, to je tak, to je se za pomisla. Dobre klijente. Prijeđam. Dziękuję bardzo. Je na peno ne muši dat tam, Na pevno ne može da to leja tam. Ne može da to leja. Na pevno ne može da tam oleja. No pa to olej, jak to je što znaje. The update with my situation is such that today on November the 9th, 2019, today is Saturday. In fact, I was at two places. One place, you know, what I did was I installed myself catalytic converter. I should say a gentleman, a mechanic, also involved in MK Ultra. Uh, something I decided I would do, installed me catalytic converter on the vehicle. That's number one thing. Uh, the gentleman reminded me of a lot of stuff. He helped me out tremendously. This is just a beautiful couple. Um, the lady was my co-worker. Well, I should say she worked in the same company where I worked. And I remember her from the early beginnings in this company. This is an old-timer. They are not from Zgirsh, they came from Constantino. Uh, and just as she promised she would do, she came out to say hello. Uh, and her hello was really, really appreciated because her hobby, who also did not deny that he would be in the shop before, he was occasionally, whenever he would come, he was there. I have audio recordings to prove the stuff I'm talking about again. I have proofs for everything, okay? Um, he kind of claimed that he was from Constantino, that's not possible, but yeah, eventually we all agreed. Uh, there's some American par car parks there, car park there, and there is one car, if this is the same car, he must have that car for at least 10 years, and the car was brought, I think, from the U.S. It was something like this. I remember Chris, I remember him, 
I have recognized his co-worker. I know about the owner of the place. The owner of the place used to have a shop himself about two blocks down the road. It was a mechanical shop, and on his property, uh, he would have like a little mechanical shops popping up. And at one point in time, when he built a house, he wasn't sure really what he's going to do about these shops. And this go all the way down to year, I have no idea, maybe 2005, something like this, maybe 2004, I think. It goes far back, this stuff. Uh, the city's gears modernized itself, started to modernize. The area became came under the close eye of, well, environmental, you know, kind of inspection, people that watch what's going on, how the neighborhood looks like. Um, and so he wasn't sure really what he's going to do with this, this uh, shops. He let them stay there because, according to him alone, it's something he cash uh, more than anything else. It's no other business that would that would be like willing to take place with better offers, something like that. So he just keep these people there. He alone works now in some other business. I don't know what he's doing. Um, I have not met him. It would be great to meet him. I would like to meet him. These are wonderful people. Uh, I recognize his co-worker is the same gentleman. In fact, yeah, it was actually this owner, uh, I think the gentleman mentioned me, who was ha who had this shop, yeah, okay. And the couple that I'm talking about, they moved to this shop about two years ago, to be correct about this stuff. All right, so anyways, these are wonderful, wonderful people to whom I will never have, I will never be able to thank enough. The thing about this Polish people, about the Poland Contrary to what Americans claimed, it was all about the money and this and that. Um, this couple that I met today, this couple would not want from you a dime. They would not take from you, I think, a penny, a zilch from you. They wouldn't take nothing from you. What they did for me today, they did it for me. And I'm saying this because the lady said exactly that she's going to do. She, she was, in fact, who said... You tell him, she said, you tell him uh, that you did saw him, that he was here, and don't be afraid, and then I will come. And she did exactly as she promised she would do it. So, you know, um, I don't even know how I would say thank you to these people. These people are just sweethearts is what they are, just like this country. There is, there is not enough I possibly could say thank you to these people. I am a little bit concerned, though, about this thing that goes on and on and on. There are so many wonderful people here in Zgersh that they wanted to help, and God knows I love them all, but I'm 48, and it would be really nice to have a family, you know, other issues other than, you know, car repair, stuff stuff like this that you would go about every day. Uh, the vehicle, the scenario behind this vehicle was just, kind of outrageous. Take him up with a variety of scenarios. The last one, if you remember all others that I did, the last one I am going to just tell you, like my friend Chris told me, um, my, my friend Chris loved me. He truly loved me. Um, and believe me, it will be very, very easily to hate me. It, it, I actually admire him because uh, I have really displayed, I can say, like an arrogant attitude, arrogant and and phlegmatic, you know, dismissive, you know, like you. Know, I knew that they were doing this kind of stuff, and instead of that, what I would do is I would go and just either laugh at them. And it's probably that's why a lot of times they turn these scenarios into buggy scenarios. They wanted to get my attention and let me know this is not a game. That my life would be probably decided because because of 
what I'm doing right now. And what I would do is I would display like totally dismissive, laughing attitude to them, and I would turn into abuse, literally, and would start to abuse them and so on, like mentally. And so when I think about Chris, and I know so. I know so because a few things I, I did study his psychology too. I, I wanted to understand people. I want to know exactly whom I, I have dealt with, whom exactly am I dealing with, whom exactly I am going to deal with. And I can say that Chris really did saw me like a little brother. He was he was out there. He was always, you know, he had to do so many unpleasant things to keep me around even, and he just put up with all that stuff. And that when he had to go through this kind of stuff, this kind of impersonations, he didn't want to go through this. He, For him, it was very difficult to be exposed to the type of torture. You know, um, basically keep him next to him, and the next thing you see, very unpleasant thing happens to him. Let's say uh, they cut the rope here one time when he was working in this company. Uh, they cut him a rope with clothing. And it was a rainy day, and he rushed home, you know, to, to save this clothing, to get the clothing away from rain. And it was in the back of the house, though, where the fence is, and next to the fence there is a trail, and people walk back and forth on that trail. And so he rushed, you know, to get this clothing, but he was too late. And this place here, this place is, this place was always, always, impossible to dry clothing here because you would have to um, you would have to load furnace uh, you know a tremendous problem with wet clothing was here in Poland Chris spent a few days with me in the forest as a matter of fact Chris was the one who spent quite considerable amount of time in forest he spent quite some time in forest um, in forest, it was difficult to dry clothing. In forest, it was all about, as Americans refer to that, as a war with the humidity, with the water, with the with the rain. This is what what uh, what the forest basically was all about when it comes to unpleasantness, right? And so, we hated this wet stuff. When I tried myself, uh, I really admired these guys that they put up with so much stuff. They they did put with a lot of stuff. It was difficult. They were younger, way younger, but it was difficult. Chris was way Chris is my age, but when he was doing this stuff he was younger, way younger than myself. But anyways he was too late. He was too late, uh and just for being a little bit too late, uh he found his clothing in a dirt basically. They cut him a rope uh, prior to that, he would go just like I did. Uh, he would hang the clothing up front, and the only thing they would do is the neighbor would go and he would take uh, grease and he would grease the the wire where you would dry the clothing. And the next thing, you pick up the clothing and you have a nasty grease on the on the clothing. And so that time, a uh, Chris really really lost it. I had no idea, maybe I pissed him off, maybe also, something like that. And when he saw this clothing and we came there, he he was very, very upset. But maybe he was not even upset, who knows, maybe he just wanted to help me out on that opportunity too. But I think that time he probably really lost it and he said, he was just make sure, make sure you hear me, make sure that you write down. Make sure that you write down. You do this to him too. You understand? Make sure you write it down. And so that kind of a suggestion, the other guy said that I heard, no, 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 no. And so well, this is something I remembered. And so I, yeah, I started a lot of this psychology, different situations, different how people view them, what. Chris is very intelligent, man. He knew how to stimulate, so I'm not even sure about that kind of stuff. It could be, it could not be. I don't know how much it did touched him, this kind of issues, but he was really, really resistant toward this kind of issues because I think he really liked me a lot. This just really was the case with the Chris. And so I'm not even sure about this situation, but when I think about the stuff that 
I have gone through, I mean, even if you would be impersonating someone's misfortune in the future, because they will keep telling him, remember, don't get upset. Remember, don't get upset. Uh, this is not you, it's him. This is what I have heard over and over and over and over again. And there was one guy that was really evil. And I'm not even sure if this guy was American or not. He might be actually from Israel. And it's nothing against the Israel, something that some liked me, some didn't, whatever it was. He actually suggested me when he did the bad stuff like this that this is he's doing basically this so I can be affected with this kind of stuff. It was a completely different psychology, completely different mentality than the one, let's say, from Chris. I have never found Chris really that he would have any kind of um, like a mental related issue that would suggest, you know, that, that he's into retaliation for something like that. All through, I did display him a really dismissive, really a bully kind of phlegmatic, you know, phlegmatic. In Slovenia, it means like uh, that you you're like a phlegma that you ignore, you know, person. That person is trying to get your attention, com complain about something, and and instead of you kind of are laughing in his face, basically. I was doing this kind of stuff too. Sure, I did all kinds of stuff. And so, when I think about the Chris, yeah, the only thing I can say is that. Um, he just never somehow failed this test. He always managed to get through somehow. And when I think about how much he had to go through this, and it was really unpleasant stuff they did to him. This kind of stuff, this definitely was not a pleasant one. Um, man, I doubt about that he would, um, you know, that he would, that he would, um, you know, this kind of stuff when they do it to him, this is like bad one. Why they did this stuff to him? I think they did it to him so they would turn him against me because it was always, remember, it's not you this is happening to, it's him. Okay? So, no, he did not even fail the test one time. I think not not even this, this one. Uh, but I did realize that this time when I mentioned this stuff, uh, by the way, I did clo uh, hang clothing exactly to the same spot that Chris did, attach one to the to the fence. And nobody yet did this to me, but I think they did not do this to me because of Chris. Because probably Chris Chris told me that I said that I'm his little bitch now, he said. You're gonna see uh I got you now, he said. He told me, uh you're gonna have to go through this kind of stuff whether you like it or not, and you're going to be my little bitch. We're going to see if you will or you will not. He was about that. <laughs> he did want to see. He did want to get a little piece of me. But he was not a person. I mean, I don't have a grudge uh, against him. I see him funny. He's, I like him a lot. Uh, but, yeah, he did say this. But, you know, if you have a brother, you would say the same thing. You would you would be in the same. You would be in the same that's why I relate this like a healthy view. Um, it would be in the same context. He didn't mean anything bad. He definitely would not do anything bad to me. He never did. And so we spent so much time together under MK Ultra, but he was by far the most pleasant guy to, to be around with. I just, uh, maybe I did not even revolt it because of Chris a lot, because the, Chris was around me and he kind of calmed me down to be next to me, to him, to be to be around him. Uh, he paid attention to me. We were always into something and so on. It was better, less boring, uh, less stressful, less crazy, I would say, as some others did. Some others did some really crazy stuff. No. Uh, so from that point of view, Chris suggested me that with a vehicle like this, you are out of luck, according to his opinion. It might really be in his opinion. They started this vehicle. They started every floor, everything that can be possibly done on the vehicle. They know about how all the parts are, how much they used are, uh, and all this stuff controlled by the police. And police is controlled by the higher instance from Warsaw. 
And, you know, Varsho today is in bed with people that have literally burned Varsho. It's not a good stuff that's happening, okay? So Chris gestured me. He said, man, yeah, mechanic sure did make sure today that when he did replace that catalytic converter uh, that if I remember properly the scenario, and I did not even go, believe me, I did not even go see the car. I just remember the scenario. I can just go, I don't even have to read the book from the MK Ultra scenario. I can just, I remember it so well that I don't have to bother, not even go under the car and see what's going on. Uh, what happened was they, he did something, did not something, uh, there was a something to do with he did not attach something or back or something like this. That means that some screw is not in place over there or something like this. Maybe a clamp or something is missing. I have no idea what it is. The only thing I remember is that Chris, he would do the same thing. Chris would go back. He would take care of that issue. Just as to Chris, he would not give me a bill of sale. He instead asked me to come back. It was the same thing. It was a classic thing. The same, the same thing. And maybe I have no idea what they have in store for me on, on the next corner. I have no idea. Maybe it's going to be something even better. They're going to do it for me. I have no idea. The thing I know is that, including these landlords, with some I got into a heavy fight. They they were crazy about me. That they gonna I don't know what that they love me and this and that and help me and I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea really what goes on, what's going to be the next, uh, what what they have in, in store for me in the next corner, what, what's going to be waiting on me. The only thing I know is that that happened too. Yeah, through the technical inspection as I proceeded to the same company as I did the first time where I was, I did not pass one. The same like as the Chris did not. This is, this is from the book, literally. The same thing as with to the Chris, the gentleman who inspected the vehicle uh, have suggested me that I have to drive around with a car in order to probably clear um, the exhaust, something like this. And I'm not going to do the same thing that Chris did. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the Chris did. Chris went not only to Grotniki, he went into some other city. I got to see the map so I can tell about that. The thing about it is, he went far. He burned like, I think it was like 100 kilometers, something like this, that he went. He burned maybe even 200, you know, maybe even 200. I'm not really sure. But he would go around and thinking that he's going to he's gonna clean exhaust. That means that they were playing with his sanity. And I was with him. I was with him in Grotniki, and then he went to some other location, something like this. He had to go. And I yet got to see the map, so I would say which one it is. But I think it was toward, I'm not sure, further from Alexander Wojcicki, some to some, maybe the same direction, but where the hell is that going? I'm not even sure. i got to look at the map. Um, it didn't do him any good. It didn't do him any good. He even stopped at the mechanic shop to which I was referred at today. Because they create situations you can't help yourself not to ask questions. You know, with the same car. Um, they, they do a lot of stuff they pull out, like they said, that you would ask, and then you were already referred to the next place. And I kind of... a. I remember the scenario, not only the location. I did not even go there yet, and I most likely I will not go there. I will not go there because I, I don't know anymore. I, I don't have so much money. Uh, if I'm going to continue to do this stuff, I have no idea where I'm going to end, how am I going to end. Uh, I'm not going to be able to take these people in the court, and I think the money is number one. Then it's all other stuff that you can, what you can afford or what you cannot afford, okay? And so what happened was, um, at this occasion, Chris gestured something that that mechanic told him it would be this, it would be that, I don't know what it would be. Then he did not fix that stuff. Instead, he, he drove, whatever, then he had to return back and 
he was glad that he fixed it. The mechanic was really so good, and so on and so forth. This is yet another beautiful gentleman over there in Zgirsh. But who knows? Maybe I go see it just just to see him, right? Um, God knows I don't have the money to spend right now on repairs because I'm not going to allow myself to be to get to the to the that point with it financially. Uh, that stuff I don't do it. I always keep safe distance from any kind of issues like this. Uh, the thing is that when I proceeded today, I didn't finish that at a technical inspection point. Just as the case was with the Chris, it was the same gentleman, like I said, the same that was out of technician. Uh, the fans would turn on. Uh, he, he told me, you, you, said, you see how, you, do you hear how bad the exhaust is? Even the fans turned on uh, in this, you know, that area, in an inspection station when you do this examination. This is how bad your exhaust is. And he said, I had no idea what that possibly could be, but he was nice. He did not charge me money that otherwise probably would. Uh, this is a really nice person that eventually let Chris even pass this um this issue with with a car. He let it go through even that that you know the exhaust was not in line with requirements, with a with a with environmental requirements. I'm not sure if he's gonna do that to me. I have no idea what the scenario is gonna play out now. Um yeah, I am gladly going to go probably tomorrow see my ladies over there in Grotniki because I have friends over there. Uh, but I'm not going to be doing uh, any kind of trips to nowhere, uh, wasting money on fuel like Chris did because I remember the scenario. Basically, for one thing, oh, this is the stuff, folks, that that yeah, they created like this in a beautiful way that you cannot even really uh, forget about what went on. Uh, and... No, that's, I don't know what else to say. I just want to say thank you to these people. Lady who sold me the catalytic converter and the gentleman first with whom I have spoken were the two people that worked in this company 100% already in 2015. I think it was in 2015. And it was the same catalytic converter I bought that Chris bought. Now, might have this catalytic converter actually be changed uh, before my installation on the vehicle? I do not know. I The only thing I know, I remember, basically, you can see what I got right there. And the second thing, there was a 1019, which is basically freshly made catalytic converter that I placed on a vehicle. However, yeah, it really did not pass this safety inspection tests. And so what else could possibly be wrong with the vehicle? I don't know. Uh, if I go back to the Chris and his issues, the way he saw this thing, do not use this car. Uh, the problem with the car is that they know for every little flow. And look at this. There is a catalytic converter. You can repair that, but you don't know what they might do also other stuff to do you damage that you don't even know. This one was expensive. Uh, this was like 250 and the next one is going to be, you don't even know what's going to be. The mechanics on rough are really expensive. They are really expensive. Uh, and so you're going to go from one point to the next point like this, and you're just going to be collecting and collecting, collecting yourself, uh, making yourself bigger and bigger, bigger expense. And basically that's what's going to happen is um, you could say you would go and you would search for another mechanic, because this is what I guess his issues wanted to relate to today's situation. When you know a clamp, a screw, I have no idea what what exactly is going on this time. What's removed from the exhaust, so it rattles a little bit. But the thing about it is that Chris continued, even if you would change the mechanics, which in this area 100% will cause you troubles, he said. Even if you would do this, he said, remember, uh, if you would go further away from the city, it only takes a phone call, and you're in trouble. Now, well, 
that kind of stuff, that kind of thinking is actually something that I cannot afford myself. There is also a possibility that that person was not a Chris, that might have been his impersonator. That's also a possibility. And it's just something I cannot afford myself to take it, to take the whole thing to that drastic uh, direction. But I do kind of agree that when you have a vehicle that they have time, like 10 years, to replace the parts and they know exactly about what part was replaced and what can be done. Like, let's say the situation was with this um, transmission. It, the mechanic, even the next day when I came, he would not disclose me. He would be just, he would not say anything. He would confirm this is an act of sabotage, but he would not say exactly what exactly was done. Uh, and so, well, it is a trouble to have a vehicle like this. Um, but then again, when you think about, you know, the mechanics, they're familiarized also with newer vehicles. And then again, I don't see the difference between this vehicle and a new vehicle, what exactly the difference would be. It comes again to the issue, the same that was with the bicycles. The first bicycle stolen within a week. Um, a gentleman who sold me the bike sold the bike already to other MK Ultra staff member. The thing about it is that so that means that they keep you know, like selling the same bikes basically. An individual is related to the police. I don't guess his son is a police officer. He alone might have been. I had no idea. They talked about this that he is actually within you know, police proximity, socially involved very closely. Um, then the problems would continue with the chain, uh, with the gear chain that would be detached with it, like a little, little flaw that you would actually have to get really dirty to find out what it is. Yeah, the problem, you would find out about one quickly, but before you would get to that, you would get quite a few times in trouble, timing-wise, when you would go to work, and dirty, and so on. And so, and then the slash tired, and so on, and so forth, always was a trouble. Whenever I would go, they would make sure today they were inside of my car, again. The trunk was not closed properly entirely, because... I manually actually wire, uh, I have like a piece of um, elastic uh, wire, something like this that I use to keep the trunk close because, yeah, they, he sold me a car without a trunk that would be properly even locking. You know, this is how much trust I had in a salesman and so on, um, and even more into the person that I... I did hurt uh, emotionally, Sergey. So what I did was I just pulled the money out of the pocket and I gave out because there's one thing I, I just cannot do. I cannot do that the people that I supposedly have hurt, and I really did hurt these people. This is true that I would go and, and uh, you know, if you like the vehicle and stuff like this, then you just go and you do it in a good faith, especially they brainwash how good this vehicle is at the beginning, so you would purchase one, and so on and so forth. But anyways, this has nothing to do with it. The point here is that if you consider all that stuff that you go through with a bicycle and now with a vehicle, then it comes really to the issues that are a little bit extreme here, you know? Is this going to be like this? Look, I have spent, I bought this vehicle already on a 23rd, 22nd, 23rd last month. And today is already the 9th. And the only thing I did was so far I was working on the parts for this vehicle, trying to get one literally through technical examination. This vehicle drank my nerves and have wasted my money guess-wise, uh, and have got me in quite a few very unpleasant situations, I have to say, otherwise. 
And it comes to the point that I have found myself basically in a country where in extreme circumstances I was in, that's about two hours and a half of walk one way to get to the city. Was not allowed even to use a bicycle. This is extreme. You have to admit that this kind of stuff is extreme. Uh, then through the financial struggle, they would hurt uh, my, uh, not, not only bicycles, but watches and stuff like this, so I would not even have timing and stuff like this. Really kind of a difficult stuff. And now I'm facing some kind of strange situation now through basically paying for the rent, have one month of rent stolen, uh, paying for some kind of a car that, that they are playing with, like completely with your sanity. Again, we are in completely other world that we should be. And so I kind of deem that this really comes to a social justice. It comes to really to the civil rights issues that you are eventually not allowed even to own vehicle, own a transportation, I should say, because before this was a bike. And right now, crippled as I am, it really felt, sure, it felt good to sit in the car rather to push the bicycle or walk. It's not a joke to have a spine injury, for one thing. Uh, and so they are really, really taking this stuff to extreme. So I have no idea how far this is going to go. Uh, I am going to go to the court with this stuff to get expenses and also for the time spent uh, dedicating myself to this vehicle uh, returned back to me. So that's all I want to say. I did not pass the inspection. I was told to come back on Monday. And it's, I can expect, will fail the test again. Is there something I can do? Maybe. I have no idea. Maybe on Monday again, rather than in search for a job, I'm going to go to a mechanic and see if something can be done. Uh, but every time I am just hit harder and harder and harder. First thing that I'm going to do now I'm going to file the claim for the court, and from that point on, I'm going to see how much money is going to left. I will see what else I'm going to do with other stuff, because I just I can't afford stuff like this to go on, right? So then a the time comes, actually, eventually you have to uh, see things this way. Uh, how is it to be in a country without a car, without a right to have a vehicle even? Uh, transportation I don't know because I never was in this kind of situation I'm a very independent person this is very difficult for me I left Slovenia to the US for better life at age 23 and I had my first car at my own car at age I think it was 19 or 18 even um, Yes, for me, never was a question of uh, transportation. This is just something that I took for granted. So I don't know, folks, about how much you take that stuff for granted, but for me, this is just part of life. It's just not normal to be without a car. And so, I don't know. I had no idea how to see these things. As to me, this whole thing, as, I, as independent as I am, this, this looks to me completely, well, let's say abnormal for some sake. But... That's how it is. Today is again, yes, November 9, 2019. What's going to happen? I have no clue. Uh, this is frankly crazy. If I don't pass this exam, instead of 120, now I should pay another 20 or 27, I'm not sure. The next time, I would have to repeat the whole thing and pay, I think, like 250 or something like this. This is the kind of money I cannot afford, like this kind of a games. And I'm afraid that Donald Trump had break down every penny. I actually feel sorry that he even uh, bragged about my showering myself with ice water. Because a psychopath, pedophile, rapist, individual that humiliates even people that are disabled, rapist, I bet that he feels unhappy about even about that kind of torture that he performed on me so he probably would just prefer to take from me everything i have uh just you know a person like this that is just enjoy destroying lives of people you know you're fired you're fired you're fired and he's enjoying that kind of stuff the sickle like this um 
I don't even know how I would refer to the stuff like this. But I'm doing it for the good cause. Um, I have something beautiful to believe in, on the other hand. It's a people of Poland. It's a beautiful place here. So that's all I want to say for this documentary for the part number 404.